Researchers have figured out that high levels of something called DHT, which stands for dihydrotestosterone, can shrink your hair follicles and shorten the hair growth cycle, resulting in hair loss. DHT is made from testosterone. An enzyme called 5-alpha reductase converts testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. Finasteride doesn't lower dihydrotestosterone directly. It blocks the enzyme 5-alpha reductase, which will lead to a smaller conversion of testosterone to DHT, which should mean less hair follicles falling out. There are three types of the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. Finasteride blocks type 2. Dutasteride, which is a similar drug to finasteride, blocks type 1 and 2. But I'll go over dutasteride in a different video. Now, when taking finasteride, the studies show that 90% of men will have their hairline stabilized after one year of taking finasteride, meaning 9 out of 10 males won't be losing their hair one year after taking the medication. Very good results. However, the drug doesn't last or work forever for most people. After five years, 66% of men have their hair loss stabilized. Still good results, but obviously much lower than 90%. This doesn't mean that it is useless in 33% of men, it just means that for those men the hair loss will occur with or without the drug, it's just that the drug will delay the time it takes for the hair loss to occur, which is still a desirable result for most men. Now, if you have hair loss because of something else like a thyroid problem or you're getting cancer treatment, finasteride is not your solution. Finasteride is specifically for male pattern baldness. If you have another condition that is causing hair loss, you need to address that because that is causing the hair loss and we don't wanna just stack medications on top of each other to correct side effects. Now, some people earlier probably saw the mechanism and had a light bulb go off. If I use finasteride, I can not only lower DHT, which would result in less hair loss, but I can also increase testosterone because it won't get broken down by the enzyme. You will increase testosterone, but by a small amount, you won't turn into Arnold Schwarzenegger. Do not take finasteride to increase testosterone. You will be disappointed. Now that I've gone over the mechanism, let's discuss dosing. Finasteride comes FDA approved in two different doses for two different conditions. 5 milligrams per day is the dose used for benign prostatic hyperplasia, which means an enlarged prostate that is not cancerous. Another name for that is BPH. This is what finasteride was originally approved for, but during the study when they went over the results, the researchers found out that balding men were stabilizing and actually reversing their hair loss. So when they figured that out, they ran a trial for hair loss specifically, and they found that they can actually use a smaller dose for hair loss. One milligram per day is the dose used for alopecia. Now, I have heard some doctors using an even lower dose, such as one milligram three times a week, and claiming to get the same results with less side effects. I cannot confirm those findings because they are specific to that medical doctor's practice. However, I will just reiterate that one milligram daily is the study dose and the optimal dose for most people that is safe and effective. Above one milligram is unnecessary and less than one milligram per day, like one milligram every other day or every three days, may lead to less desirable results. Something I will mention is that the less you take of finasteride, the less chance of side effects. That should be obvious, but I want to mention it, which takes us to our next section, the side effects of finasteride. Reduced libido, difficulty maintaining erections, and delayed ejaculation are the most common side effects of finasteride that scare people. An interesting thing is the study for one milligram showed that 1.8% that took finasteride one milligram per day had sexual side effects, while 1.3% that took placebo had the same side effect. That's about a 38% difference, which is not insignificant, but the five milligram dose had a 5% rate of sexual side effects, which is a 384% increase. So the chance of the side effect is significantly smaller at the lower dose. A question I always get is, are the side effects reversible? Meaning, is it permanent? And the answer is, most of the time, is completely reversible. The side effects are reversible, and depending on how quickly you experience the side effects, the quicker you will recover from it. For example, let's say you start taking finasteride, and within a week or two, you realize you have a reduced libido, and so on. Once you stop the medication, it should only take less than a week for your body to go back to normal. You have a higher sensitivity to the medication. Now, 
let's say you start taking finasteride and months down the line, like six months later or even longer, you realize you have the same side effects. It will probably take a few weeks or a month for your body to go back to normal because the buildup of all that finasteride is lingering in your system. Finasteride has a short half-life in the blood, about eight hours, but a long half-life in the skin, about 30 days. So expect about a month of residual effects of finasteride continuing after you stop the medication. But again, after that period of time, you should be back to normal. Something you can do if you experience a delayed response to finasteride side effects is lowering the dose because you have too much built up over time. That's when maybe you can go and use the one milligram every other day or three times a week to minimize the side effects while getting a good amount of the benefits. You can try the same thing if you experience side effects right away, like after a week of starting finasteride. But in my opinion, lowering the dose will just delay your reaction and at some point you just can't lower it enough for it to still be effective. So if you experience the side effects very early on, it's best to probably accept that you're just too sensitive to that particular medication and to explore other options. Now, Although sexual side effects are the most common side effects of finasteride, a few others I can mention are brain fog, dizziness, and breast tenderness, like a pain or sore feeling in the chest, and also probably in the scrotum area, but these are extremely rare. These are side effects that would prompt me to stop the medication as soon as possible, and again, explore other options. Overall, I would say that finasteride is a safe and effective drug for stabilizing hair. The side effect profile and rate of occurrence is small at the one milligram dose, which is the dose used for hair loss. And again, five milligrams for BPH. 